I'd like to call to order this regular meeting of the Lincoln Lancaster County Planning Commission of April 15th, 2015. A printed agenda is available outside the hearing room and a copy of the full agenda, including the staff reports, is available at the front of the chambers with the clerk. The Open Meetings Act is posted just inside the doors at the back of the room. If you parked in the parking garage across the street to the north, be sure to pick up a coupon for free parking. They're right there in the corner of the desk. Out of courtesy for those attending the meeting, the commissioners and the staff, cell phone usage is not permitted in these chambers during any portion of the meeting, and we appreciate your cooperation. Please note the Planning Commission action today is final on items number 1.1, 1.2, 1.4, 4.2B and 4.3. Any aggrieved person may appeal final action on the Planning Commission to the City Council by filing a notice of appeal with the City Clerk within 14 days following the action of the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission action on all other items is a recommendation to the City Council or County Board. The first item of business is approval of the minutes of the regular meeting held April 1st, 2015, as revised. Is there a motion? No approval of the revised minutes. Second. Second. All right, let's call the vote. Weber? Yes. Harris? Yes. Sheer? Abstain. Beecham? Yes. Sunderman? Yes. Ho? Yes. Lust? Yes. Motion carried, six to zero. Actually, I think it's five with one abstention. Six with yeah. one obsession. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. All right, I can't count today. <laughs> the next item of business is the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda will be called at the same time and will not be scheduled for a separate public hearing unless there is a request from someone wishing to speak or at the request of a commission member. I will ask Jerry to read all the consent agenda items into the record. Once those items are read, she will ask if there is anyone wishing to speak. If you wish to speak on an item on the consent agenda, we would ask that you stand and state that item. That item will then be removed from the consent agenda and scheduled as a separate public hearing under section three of today's agenda. All items remaining on the consent agenda will be voted upon in total with a motion for approval. Jerry, will you please call the items on the consent agenda? Yes. Item 1.1, .1, special permit number 15019 to allow an expansion of the licensed premises for the sale of alcohol for consumption on the premises on property generally located at 321 Victory Lane. Item 1.2 is special permit 15020 to allow the conversion of the existing structure and addition of a second structure into dwellings for up to 30 members of a religious order on property generally located at 5600 South Coddington Avenue. Item 1.3 is street and alley vacation number 15003 to vacate all of the remaining portions of the east-west alley adjacent to lots two through six, block two, Avon Dale edition, generally located at 220 South 20th Street. Item 1.4 is waiver number 15003 to waive the width to depth ratio for lots six, seven, and eight of block 24 Highland View preliminary plat number 05003 on property generally located at West Silverado Drive and Northwest Temptus Drive. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed on the consent agenda? I see none. Is there anyone here wishing to speak on any item on the consent agenda? If so, please stand and state that item. All right, seeing no one, we will go ahead and entertain a motion. Move approval of this consent agenda. Second. Let's call the vote. Weber? Yes. Harris? Yes. Shear? Yes. Beecham? Yes. Sunderman? Yes. Poe? Yes. Lust? Yes. Motion carried, seven to zero. Again, this is final action on special permit number 15019, special permit number 15020, and waiver number 15003, unless appealed to the city council. All right, there are no requests for deferral on today's agenda, so now we will proceed to the public hearings. The staff will make a brief presentation. The applicant then will then be requested to present his or her testimony, followed by those who wish to testify in support, followed by those who wish to testify in opposition. The staff will then be given an opportunity to respond to the testimony, and then the applicant shall have an opportunity for rebuttal. 
Each person testifying should state their name and address and shall have five minutes to speak unless additional time is requested and granted. The timer will go off after four minutes, then you have one minute to wrap up your testimony. The Planning Commission will vote immediately at the close of the public hearing unless the Commission votes to defer action or continue the public hearing. Jerry, please call the first public hearing item. Okay, item one or 4.1 is text amendment number 15003 amending section 27.63.090 of the Lincoln Municipal Code relating to providing that, num that the number of members residing in dwellings for members of a religious order may be increased up to 100% when the dwelling is located within 600 feet from the boundary of a school, church, or early childhood care facility served by the members. And amending table 27.72.010C exceptions to the minimum lot requirements in the AG and AGR districts in section 27.72.010C to allow dwellings of members of a religious order in the AG district on a minimum lot area of five acres. Staff approval or staff recommendation is for approval. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed on this application? I see none. Good afternoon, Christy Icorn, planning staff. The text amendment that is in front of you today specifically addresses the special permit for dwellings of a religious order. The text amendment is actually influencing two special permits that are also on the agenda today. One was on the consent agenda and another one will be talked about later in the agenda. What the text amendment does, first off, is it allows for an increase in the number of people who can reside within a dwelling for a dwelling for a member of a religious order. Um, oftentimes the dwelling is a convent um, of some sort. Today, you can have three unrelated persons living together in a household. If you have more than three unrelated persons, you would need to have a special permit of some kind. Um, dwellings for members of a religious order is a special permit in and of itself, and it's very specific to the use um, that it has to be associated with a religious order of some kind. Today in the code, there are certain square footage requirements that determine the density or the number of people who are allowed to reside in the house. The applicant would like to have at least six people in a dwelling for members of a religious order. Today, the calculations that are used based on the current code would only allow them to have four. So the proposed text amendment would allow them to increase that up to 100% if they are within 600 feet from a school, church, or entity for which they are serving. Now you might ask the question, why 600 feet? This came up whenever the applicants brought this topic to the neighborhood roundtable. And the reason why 600 feet was determined to be an appropriate distance is because that is approximately two blocks. And that's generally a standard that we use when we determine how far people are willing to walk to get from one place to another. In this case, the, the, per, in the special permit that gets talked about later is approximately 600 feet from the facility in which the sisters will be serving. And so 600 feet is used not only here, but it's used throughout the code. And it's also been used when we talk about appropriate parking um, and when we talk about parking waivers and when we talk about parking in other developments. So that's the first part of this text amendment. It would allow to increase the density of a particular dwelling unit if the members of the religious order are within 600 feet of a school church or um, building in which they are serving. The second part of the text amendment is to allow for dwellings for members of a religious order to be on lots that are less than 20 acres. In the AG zoning district, you are only allowed to apply for a special permit if you are on 20 acres or more. Although we have lots of lots out in the county, three mile area, zoned AG that are less than 20 acres, they are not considered um, allowable for special permitted uses unless it's specifically stated. There is a table in our height and area regulations that talks about what uses are allowed on lots less than 20 acres or less than a standard buildable lot. 
This table is found in 2772-010. And you can see that from agricultural except commercial feedlots to public uses to stables to churches to greenhouses and pet cemeteries, those are all uses that are actually permitted in the AG zoning district on 10 acres or more. And some of them, such as churches, are permitted on less than 10 acres. When you get even further down, you'll see that there's little asterisks next to some of those P's, and those specify that you have to be on at least five acres or more. So when we looked at the use of dwellings for members of a religious order and how they would function out in the County Three Mile in the AG zoning district, it seemed that they could function very similar to the way churches function. And when we needed to determine a minimum number of acres for, for such a facility, it was determined that five acres in the AG would be appropriate. And that was the reason why the text was being amended to add dwellings for members of a religious order to that table in 2772. Does anybody have any questions about this text amendment? I have a quick one. First, Christy, could you do me a favor and just pull up the end of that light so it's kind of level? The one uh, closest to you? This one? Oh, thank Is that you better? Much. <laughs> much better, thanks. Um, I just had a quick question. Um, does the text amendment have any ramifications regarding parking requirements, or do those really go along with each specific um, special permit? There are special parking requirements for dwellings for members of a religious order, and we did not change those with this text amendment. They stay the same. Okay. Um, so we wouldn't be requiring them to have more parking. This is it, they could still have the amount that was there under the current text. They still have the amount. Now, in the future, if a different special permit came in and it was deemed that more parking might be necessary for that particular instance, then it would be through that special permit that that requirement could happen. <coughs> Christy, does this set a precedence for future developments like this? Does it, I mean, I'm comfortable with the, with what's going on today, but then could, I guess it kind of goes to the definition of religious order and could people abuse that to then <coughs> live in, in close proximity? Sure, no, I, I understand the concern and I think there is comfort in the idea that these, this is a special permitted use. And so even if we weren't doing the text amendment and we were only allowing for the densities that are currently allowed in the code, dwellings for members of a religious order are not permitted by right. They are reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis through the special permit. Okay. So really all this text amendment is doing is um, allowing more options for people to come before this body and make um, an argument for why they should be granted a special permit in a particular neighborhood zoning district. But it would still require the approval. It would still require okay. the approval of a special permit, correct. Thank you. And just to follow up on Chris's question, I don't know if there is a definition of religious order, but so could I have a, want to do it like a camp and could this be camp counselor housing or does that really not fit the definition as it's in the code? That would not likely fit okay. the definition as it applies to this particular special permit. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for Christy? All right, we will take um, testimony from the applicant. <coughs> All right. My name is Sister Mary Michael. I'm principal of St. Peter's School, currently residing at 4100 Southwest 56th, hoping to reside at 6225 <laughs> South 44th Street. Um, thank you for your kind attention to our, our proposal today. Um, currently, there are three of us serving at our school. So you may be wondering, why are you asking to go up to six? We hope to serve in the parish for many, many years. We also have a good number of young people joining us. Therefore, the likelihood of us increasing our capacity at our school somewhat is, is very probable, as well as uh, entertaining a student teacher or a team teacher to help train our young sisters. Mother Joan Paul, in projecting for the considerable future, um, asked if we could propose the text amendment at this point when we're acquiring the property so that it would not limit us in the future. Currently, the three of us drive ride in one car. We are known for carpooling. Um, we hope to be a, a positive uh, impact on the neighborhood. Um, 
we frequently walk in the neighborhood among the among the people there, and um, we're hoping to um, be able to reside closer to our place of uh, employment there and to be able to walk back and forth and, and be good members of our neighborhood. Any questions for the applicant? Thank you for coming forward. Thank you. Is there any additional testimony in support of this application? All right. Do we have testimony in opposition? Seeing none, we'll ask if we have any additional questions for Christy. All right, well then we will go forward with entertaining a motion. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Well, this seems like a very sensible um, text amendment, especially with the extra protection of being able to have a special permit um, whenever this particular project wants to be used. So I am going to support the application. I just have one thing. Um, I, I agree with um, Commissioner Lost, and I'd also like to say something about the process. I, I like it when a text amendment is associated with an application because that we're not theorizing about what's good, um, but it's a concrete example, and, and I think that way our ordinances change with the organic growth of our city, so I'm very comfortable with this. All right, let's call the vote. Weber? Yes. Harris? Yes. Shear? Yes. Beecham? Yes. Sunderman? Yes. Hope? Yes. Lust? Yes. Motion carried 7 to 0. Next item is item 4.2A, change of zone 151511 from AG Agricultural to AGR Agricultural Residential District and item 4.2B, special permit number 15021 to allow the Trinity Oaks Community Unit Plan for 17 dwelling units, including requests to waive the maximum <coughs> lot area, allow double frontage lot, maximum block, block length, sanitary sewer to run opposite street grades, to not require grading of streets in the urban reserve component, setbacks, and lot width to depth ratio on property generally located at 9400 South 56th Street. Staff recommendation is for conditional approval and this is final action by the Planning Commission for special permit number 15021 unless to the City Council. Or the city, yes, City Council. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed on these applications? I see none. Good afternoon, Brian Will, Planning Department. Um, just for reference, um, maybe zoom out and give you a better sense of where and anybody watching where this is located. Um, <clears throat> I've highlighted the area of the application here in blue. The art, adjacent arterial streets, Yankee Hill Road along the north. This is South 56th Street. Rokeby Road here along the south and then South 70th Street. So kind of right in the middle on the west edge. Um, as Jerry noted, two applications here, uh, they go hand in hand. The first is a change of zone from AG to AGR, and then the second is a special permit for community unit plan utilizing build through. Um, so why AGR zoning here? And <clears throat> so what I have here is um, sort of a blow up of the larger um, area and the zoning pattern that we find down here. And so this darker yellow here is AGR. Of course, the property we're talking about is this sort of little island of AG surrounded by this larger area of AGR, um, which does extend actually to the northeast and then um, to the northwest and across the street, um, across South 56. So um, in simple terms, um, on the face of it, all the surrounding zoning is AGR, so if you're looking at a change of zone here, AGR in that sense seems appropriate. <clears throat> Why not something more, perhaps R3, um, R4 zoning? Well, this area isn't really eligible to be annexed yet because city utilities aren't there. And so we've got to look at um, something else perhaps in the interim. And in that respect, this property is sort of um, I guess it's sort of in a, in a hybrid location. By that I mean um, it's not really ready to be annexed today, 
but it's also not one of those areas that we would look at and say strictly um, do build through. We're not going to be there for 20 to 30 years. Recall that the zoning ordinance talks about where it's appropriate to do build through, and that's in tiers two and three, areas we don't anticipate to grow out and expand to for 25, 30 years. Um, however, this is tier 1B, okay, meaning it's the near future uh, that we would anticipate being out in this area with city utilities. What I've shown here is, uh, again, sort of zoomed out a little bit, showing the area, the corporate limit for the city, and the darker areas here and here and here are in the city. And so, again, our subject property here, everything around here is still outside the city, but you can see that the city's moving that way, getting closer. And so it probably isn't hard to imagine that it's, it's not too distant future when the city will be there. So we think that this notion of doing the build through in this location today, but in a manner that really sets itself up for being annexed um, in the near future makes a lot of sense. And so I think the plan that is being proposed here today by the applicant um, makes a lot of sense. And by that, what I mean is, and I apologize that uh, the site plan in your, in your packet, um, what shows up really good is what's being proposed for um, the immediate development. That is, there's 17 lots down in the southeast corner, sorry, 16 lots down in the southeast corner of the property. And then there's one additional lot which accounts for the existing dwelling on the residence, which is going to remain. Um, but uh, the lots that are proposed down here are anywhere from a half acre to an, half, to an acre in size. Um, where if this, if this development were just zoned AGR and developed at AGR standards, you'd wind up with three acre lots. And what we're saying is, this, this area is probably closer to being annexed than not. And so why not try to get something that more closely approximate, approximates urban development? So that's what's being shown here, essentially, is the largest lots down here, just, just over one acre a little bit. Um, these areas here, which um, is the development reserve, that is about 60% is development, is not being um, platted nor developed today. It's set aside for the day when it is annexed. Um, unfortunately, what you can't see because it's just a little bit too light, but there is a, there is a future street and lot layout here that will resemble something fairly similar to what I would suggest is a sort of a typical R3 residential neighborhood that we find out at the edge of the city, southeast, South Lincoln. <clears throat> so what the applicant's proposing here before you today is this community unit plan, which allows 17 lots based on um, the design standards of 0.27 um, dwelling units per acre for the 46 acre tract. 16 lots, 17, counting this one. The streets that will be installed and will be improved are the streets shown here that would serve the lots that are going to be developed immediately, and they'll be built to city standards. So it's not going to be um, gravel or some some alternate lesser standard they will be built to city standards now the future streets which are shown where you know which are proposed where uh, the lots that um, in the development reserve for future development those won't be built now but they will be built sometime in the future when utilities can be extended this property can be annexed and rezoned perhaps to r3 that's when that future layout will come back before the planning commission for approval. So there's, um, there's several waivers that are associated with this, and we are supporting all of them. Um, they in part relate to the fact that everything surrounding this is developed with acreage is currently. This one, this development here, um, does what it can and what is required to <clears throat> um, conform, make itself compatible, make street connections, fit into the neighborhood. Um, and it also, I think, respects the reality of, you know, this thing has to, has to drain. And so part of the layout um, relates to the existing topography. So 
We're supportive of the waivers um, that are being proposed here associated with it. So there are, there are a few conditions of approval, and probably most notably, grading and drainage be approved by Public Works. Um, second, um, until the day this area is annexed, they will be on individual wells. You know, real water is nearby. I think there's properties on Yankee Hill Road that are served. I think the intention right now is to um, serve each lot with an individual well. Um, we don't have that well information. We don't have a well report in yet that's been approved by the health department. So um, condition of approval is that data information be provided, reviewed into the satisfaction of the health department. Um, so with that, um, I guess I, I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, the planning commission might have. The first round, what's the plan for a sewer? Um, the sewer is going to be installed with, uh, with the street and it's going to come up to about this point here where there's going to be a package plant. That's the interim. So the package plant is going to serve all of the existing lots here until municipal facilities uh, arrive. It will be then disconnected and um, hooked up to that. So we're anticipating an easy um, sewer hookup. Right, right, okay. right. Yeah, that, that, uh, that facility, again, is going to be installed, built to the city's standards. So... That switchover should should be easy. Yeah. Any other questions for Brian? One. Thank you. Um, the letter that mentions the the existing home would have a, continued to have access on South Fifty Sixth. Um, that will happen if I, but it will be temporary. Is that what the notes are telling yeah. us? And what that that's this house here. That's this driveway, which you drive out there that exists out today. So the request is to continue to be allowed to use that, even as this is built and this is developed, until such time as the property is annexed and the future development state is realized. Because what's proposed then is the additional street network here, which, like I said, is difficult to see in, in your packet. But it will extend the street down here shows additional lots being created down here. Um, and at that time, that driveway will go away and it will take access off that internal street network. And so yes, for the interim period, um, city staff is okay with that. Thank you. Any other questions? Right. Oh, okay. What, what is a single package plant? Um, On the sewer, what is a single package plant? What does that mean? Um, is that a it's, lagoon? It's or a, it? I, well, it hasn't been determined exactly what it's going to be yet, but the applicant's here, and I, I think he can probably talk about that better than I can, okay. of what they're proposing at this point anyway. All right. Any other questions for Brian before we punt to the applicant? Okay. Hear from the applicant. Good afternoon. My name is Mike Eckert with Civil Design Group here today on behalf of uh, Matt Kleinschmidt with Pride Homes, who is the proposed developer of this project. Um, I got uh, uh, some similar but slightly different uh, exhibits I think we can look at uh, to uh, follow up on what Brian said. Uh, this one's an aerial, uh, and on the top here we've got uh, Yankee Hill Road. And then uh, here's Rokeby Road as it exists, and future Rokeby Road will be here. 56 and 70th and um, you can see uh, our proposed layout for this development within there and I think this is an interesting aerial to show that that entire mile section we're in is composed of acreages and so um, we think the change of zone makes sense and we hope you concur that with the way we've gone about the build out of it it may make sense for both an, an acreage development component and the future urban reserve component and uh, as Brian mentioned, there is a point, and, and, uh, and, and Matt and us will endeavor over the next few years with the capital improvement program to try to get sewer and water to this site. Uh, the sewer uh, will more than likely come here from the, the, uh, the Samson development uh, and, and, and head to the east. And we're working with city staff uh, on where the water would come if it would just come down 56th, 56th Street or what would be uh, 48th Street. And so, that uh, that then led to the layout, and I've got uh, um, 
and a fresh exhibit that Brian uh, mentioned that uh, was a little harder to read in the staff report. And I'll zoom in here so you can kind of see the build through a little bit better. Um, and and as, as uh, Matt has quite a vision for this property on, on how he wants many things done. And I think it's really flowed well with what the city desires uh, in terms of a, a near acreage like this uh, near acreage development like this that um, it's inevitable that uh, will be annexed at some point in the not too distant future as Brian said uh, tier B tier 1B um, and so this better this has got better resolution to show that the the 16 lots uh, that will be doing new lots down here in this location uh, will be done immediately and then this is the existing home that counts for our 17th and um, that gives you a better uh, picture too on how the street will come in here eventually with annexation and then so that one single driveway access will be removed. Uh, but I think from the city's perspective, their goals were what you just mentioned, Janelle, make it easy for hookup. And so particularly with streets and sewer is also a, a thing that we looked at. So these streets will be built to city standard concrete curb and gutter 27 foot wide it'll look and feel like you're in the city but you're not uh, and I know we've recently had some situations with acreages who's are close and their roads have gotten beat up and it's time to fix them and they're, they're, things aren't to city standard from the get-go so these will be city standard from the get-go and then yes um, uh, in order to do less than three acre lots uh, which these generally range in size from one to one and a half acre the the initial acreage development component. Um, there is a, a community sewer system planned. Uh, we did find a good portion of the property out there uh, where the soil does percolate enough to basically, uh, can you ask this to have a, a, a large septic field, if you will, in part of the urban reserve component that would be dismantled when sewer comes in. And so we're continuing to work on the most efficient design of that. But, uh, and that system can also be done in a modular fashion. Matt anticipates of those 16 homes that um, there will maybe three or four a year that are brought on so he can grow the sewer system as the development grows. It's still fully regulated by NDEQ and they have to approve it from the get-go but we can develop it in a modular fashion. And so um, I think that the, the, the city gets uh, the best thing that they would like in terms of what I kind of called this an infill acreage project. Um, <laughs> and there's also uh, Mr. Gibson's property uh, to, the, um, to the east there is, is one of the two pieces out here in this mile section that were never fully developed. And so we've planned adequate connections into him and to uh, 60th Street to the north and to the south and 58th Street in the existing Kess Estates and made a connection for our other neighbor there. So um, all in all, um, uh, we're really proud of this one, and I'm really uh, have to give uh, 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 credit to Matt for his vision and how he wanted to do it, and and I really think we're going to end up with a super nice development that is uh, compatible with the existing acreages, but also plans for that future annexation very well. So, be happy to answer any questions you have. We don't see any questions. Very good. Thanks. Okay. We have any additional testimony in support of this application? All right, testimony in opposition. Seeing none, do we have any additional? Sure. Oh, no. oh, please come forward, sir. I'm John Hollingsworth, 9200 South 60th. Our land butts up against the north um, of this property. And I'm not sure if I'm in a opposition to this or in favor. I'm not really in favor, but you know, I'd, I'd rather just see this nice open land. But I understand uh, the situation. And uh, I think the uh, plan is doable the way it is. I do have some concerns about the water, the wells. Um, there's going to be a lot of water usage. And uh, we all have wells out there. What's that going to do to the water table um, to have 17, 16 more wells there? I'm concerned about the septic system 
it seems like that is not set in stone yet what they're going to do. Uh, Matt told me a couple weeks ago that they were going to have a, a lateral field right across the fence from us. Um, you know, that's a big lateral field for 16 large homes. Will it work? You know, if they do it, I, I trust that it's engineered and inspected and all that. But so I have some concerns. But um, <laughs> that's the way it is, I guess. All right. Have you been in contact with the applicant and been talking yes, uh -huh. to him? Yes, we've had okay. a couple meetings. And all right. I appreciated his explaining everything. Okay. All right. But he's not able to explain everything at this point, so I understand that. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Do we have any other testimony in opposition? All right, um, questions for staff. I have one. Brian? Hey, Brian. Oh, hi. Um, we heard a lot of uh, testimony at our last meeting about <laughs> depth of wells and water availability and stuff. Can you tell me um, at what stage in the process the health department has to approve for a new development like this? Or Well, at this point, it's condition of approval. So okay. that is the planning commission, I'm presuming, say the planning commission would approve it with these conditions, then it becomes part of the approval. They have to satisfy that requirement. Okay. So, so the preliminary information um, was submitted, but it's not, um, it's not with the health department. Um, is looking for would typically get so. But they will have to they do They will have to do that off. before plans are finally approved, before anybody um, could find a plat, before anybody could submit plans for building permit. The conditions associated with this special permit have to be satisfied first. And I would assume that's wells as well as septic. Correct. Do they do septic as well? Okay, thank you. Yep. Whoops, sorry. Anybody no, that was, she asked my question. Okay, okay. Um, do we have any rebuttal from the applicant? Uh, yes, um, and I, I'm actually glad Mr. Hollingsworth um, brought up the well situation. I, I didn't necessarily address that in my initial comments because we are confident that we can meet it. I've been in contact with Doug Smith at the County Health Department, and um, you know I was involved in an acreage development in 2007 north of Pawnee Lake. And uh, the water situation up there is entirely different. You know, it's, it's harder to come by. And we ended up with a condition that uh, on that one where it said a uh, you know, well had to be dropped on each lot before a building permit could be obtained. All 18 were dropped. All 18 were successful. All 18 have been built and with no apparent repercussions to the neighbors. So, um, but I appreciate um, uh, John's comments in that, yes, we have to submit the geological study yet. Uh, to the health department to their satisfaction proving that there is adequate water um, I don't have the uh, rural water Lancaster County rural water district map now that shows their service areas but um, what what we find is it's pretty revealing in that they they have a line in Yankee Hill and they have a line in Rokeby but neither of them have ever been extended up because this entire circle kind of like this <laughs> Uh, all those folks have been able to find water. Um, uh, what I hear is it's a little bit hard. There's some treatment that's required. So, uh, but suffice it to say, we will comply with the health department's requirements, prove that information. Uh, we'll do a 13 parameter test on the existing well for the house and get that into them too. So, um, and I guess what I'm saying is, I think a couple of those developments, acreage developments, in areas where water is much harder to come by have proven that, uh, and, and during that testimony, we had experts talking about the Kona Depression with a residential well and how much does it really reach out, and, and it's, it's not more than really 50 feet in terms of the amount of the aquifer that it affects when it's pumping hard, and most residential wells don't pump that hard. So, um, but that was a very good question, and I and, uh, appreciate Mr. Hollingsworth being here. We, one of our clients developed a piece of land he had in town and he moved out here to get back out in the country and now here we are with an acreage development although the urbanization is some uh, bit away and then uh, following up with him too on the the septic system yes 
it, it appears uh, uh, there's a different uh, firm working on that, an engineer out of uh, Fremont, that the, the lateral fields will be up here in this area. This is Mr. Hollingsworth lot. Um, and it will be capturing them down in this area, pumping them up there. Um, but again, I guess I would stress to him what staff said is because it is a community system, it has to meet the Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality regulations. Whether it's a treatment plant, a mound system, or just a large septic field. And what we have found is they generally make us design those for larger than what the average household water use really is with more efficient uh, washing machines and dryers. And, and, and so uh, the, the, the septic field will more than lar uh, likely be larger than needed, but um, the, the, the NDEQ will be there to regulate that, approve that. And I believe they even will hold a hearing on their own for the approval of that. So um, we, I think we've got the health department and NDEQ um, backing up the neighbors on their concerns about those issues. Thank you, Mike. Ken? Uh, how often is that inspected? Is it on a complaint basis on the septic system or yearly, or how does that work? Well, uh, discharge plants, discharge systems have a monthly inspection that's required. Non-discharge systems, uh, I believe it may just be annual, Ken, to make sure that it appears that the lateral systems are still working. Uh, but the discharge, because those systems actually take the gray water and discharge it into an existing drainage way, um, it's monthly. Um, I, I think at this point we're 95% sure what I just showed you is going to be the system we'll use. Uh, but I think at best it might be an annual inspection on those because it's not, it's not discharging, so it's just an infiltration system. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Mike? All right. We'll go ahead with entertaining a motion. Could I, could I ask a question? Um, of whom? <laughs> yeah, you can talk to him. Well, uh, it would be public. George Gibson, I live in the east. I understood that septic system was going to be down by 56. If it's up there, I would protest if that's a lagoon rather than laterals. It's a lateral system. It's all underground. Okay. I'm not okay then. No, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'd move approval. Second. Any discussion? Um, this seems like a, a good fit for the development that is our already in the area. Of course, it's a little concerning when we're building more acreages in an area that we already anticipate is going to be part of the city very, fairly quickly, but I think um, staff and the applicant have come up with a good plan on how we're going to be able to integrate that project into um, future city growth. So I'm going to support the application. Call the vote. Weber. Yes. Harris. Yes. Here. Yes. Kitchen. Yes. Sunderman. Yes. Ho. Yes. Lust. Yes. Motion carried, seven to zero. Next item is item 4.3, special permit 15018, permitting a dwelling for members of a religious order accommodating up to six persons on property generally located at 6225 South 44th Street. This is final action on this special permit 15018 and last appeal to the city council. And staff recommendation is conditional approval. Yes. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed on this application? I see none. Can we go back for just one second? Did we need to call the yes, change did. of zone and special okay. permits yes, separately? Did. Yes. Sorry. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Okay. Let's um, rescind the action that was just on the vote that was just taken, and we'll call item change of zone 15011 from AG Agricultural to AGR Agricultural Residential District on property generally located at 9400 South 56th Street. Move approval. Second. Call the vote, please. Weber? Yes. Harris? Yes. Shear? Yes. Beecham? Yes. Sunderman? Yes. Ho? Yes. Lust? Yes. Motion carried, seven to zero. Next item is item 4.2B. Special permit 15021 to allow the Trinity Oaks community unit plan for 17 dwelling units, including 
request to waive the maximum lot, lot length, allow double frontage lot, maximum block length, sanitary sewer to run opposite street grades to not require grading of streets in the urban reserve component, setbacks and the lot width to depth ratio on property generally located at 9400 South 56th Street. This is final action on the special permit 15021 and less appealed to the city council. Staff recommendation is for conditional approval. Move approval. Second. Call the vote, please. Weber? Yes. Harris? Yes. Shear? Yes. Beecham? Yes. Sunderman? Yes. Ho? Yes. Lust? Yes. Motion approved, seven to zero. Okay, I'll reread the next item, which is special permit 15018, permitting a dwelling for members of a religious order accommodating up to six persons on property generally located at 6225 South 44th Street. This is final action on this item, unless appealed to the city council. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed? I see none. Good afternoon again. Christy Eichhorn, planning staff. We talked very, very briefly about this particular special permit as we discussed the text amendment to allow for an increase in the number of residents in a dwelling for members of a religious order. This particular special permit is for 6, um, 6225 South 44th Street. This is an aerial of the area of the special permit. You can see and highlighted here in red is the property that would have the special permit. It is approximately 600 feet from the school. It is surrounded by mostly single family residential units. The proposed, the house that's proposed to be used is gonna stay a single family house. They are going to add two rooms to the basement of the house to accommodate the six members that would potentially be living in the house, but they don't propose any other structural changes to the house, so it would continue to function as a single family dwelling in terms of how it is perceived from the streets. Does anybody have any questions about the special permit? I don't see any. Okay. Um, do we have testimony from the applicant? Michael you've already heard from me once the only thing I might add is there is a two-car garage and we plan to have a maximum of two cars so we won't even need street parking thank you thank you is there any testimony in opposition to this application I'm sorry is there additional testimony in support of this application any testimony in opposition questions for Christie all right we will go forward with entertaining a motion move approval Second. Any discussion? Again, I, this sounds like a reasonable and pleasant and nice project, so I'm gonna support the application. Call the vote, please. Weber? Yes. Harris? Yes. Shear? Yes. Beecham? Yes. Sunderman? Yes. Pope? Yes. Yes. And carried seven to zero. Okay, the last item is item 4.4, .4, street and alley vacation number 15004 to vacate a portion of the right of way along the south side of M Street from a point 15 feet west of the east right of way line of 7th Street to the west right of way line of 8th Street and a portion of the right of way line along the north side of L Street from a point 15 Line of 8th Street, generally located at M Street and L Street between 7th and 8th Streets. Staff recommendation conf is conforms to the comprehensive plan. Please note that Commissioner Maya Harris has elected to exercise her right of abstention to avoid any appearance of partiality in this matter due to her close relationship with the applicant. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed on, these or on this application? I see none. Good afternoon, Paul Barnes, Planning Department. The item before you as stated is a request to vacate portions of two streets. Uh, those streets are M Street and L Street between 7th Street and 8th Street on a block that is shown on this aerial. This is a full block um, in the area that's being now known as South Haymarket and is occupied 
completely by um, the former Metal Gold Dairy. Um, there was a redevelopment agreement approved in 2011 for reuse of this, this complex of buildings, um, and that redevelopment is underway. Um, they have um, incorporated Telesis into this building and are now working on bringing a brewery to the site um, with subsequent phases of redevelopment. Um, the request to vacate, as I was saying, includes a portion of M Street on the south, which is highlighted in this area here. And then on the south side of the block, we're looking at L Street on the north side between 7th and 8th Streets. Uh, there are a couple of reasons why the applicant is requesting this vacation. One of them has to do with the uh, geothermal um, system that is proposed for this development. Um, they would like to add additional geothermal wells in the area of the right-of-way to be vacated um, in both of those areas, um, as well as have uh, access and control of their loading areas. There are a lot of docks and overhead doors along the buildings on L Street as well as M Street. And those have existed for decades, um, being that this was an industrial area. Um, a lot of those loading areas were needed to operate um, and have a successful business. Those will continue to be used with this redevelopment moving forward. The as I said, this area is being known as South Haymarket, um, and we are doing a study in this area. And we have looked at the rights of way um, that exist in South Haymarket. The history of this block is that M Street and L Street were both platted with 100 feet of right of way. Um, over the years, pieces and parts have been vacated. Um, most recently, I think there was a vacation of some right-of-way along 7th Street as part of this redevelopment project. Um, on a case-by-case -case basis, it is appropriate to look at when we should support vacating rights-of-way. Um, we do want to be able, though, to maintain enough right-of-way to function as a street, to have vehicular and ped pedestrian traffic, um, as well as certain streetscape elements. And with the vacation as proposed, there is a recommendation uh, to include a pedestrian um, way through the vacated portions of the streets. So you would have a, a functioning sidewalk um, as part of this redevelopment proposal. There isn't really one there today. It's just kind of this open curb cut um, with continued access along both of those streets. The other thing that we're looking at in uh, the South Haymarket study is, well, what, I mean, this is an overall 38 block area, what impact would something like this have on the adjacent blocks? And one of the concepts that we're still discussing is potentially reestablishing some of the rights of way. Um, one of those under consideration is M Street west of 7th, so it would be extended in this direction. So what would this vacation, how would it, if at all, impact that proposal or that idea? And we've talked with Public Works, we've come up with some designs, and we found that it wouldn't have a negative impact on that concept, that we still could dedicate additional M Street right-of-way. We would still have two lanes of traffic on M Street, still have the ability for sidewalks and other streetscapes. Um, and so it wouldn't have that negative impact. With that, I'll answer any questions you have. I have one. So Paul, I know that this building is landmarked. Um, am I right in thinking that this doesn't have to go to Historic Preservation Commission because really the changes we're talking about are sort of underground, right? It's not impacting, as you mentioned, the streetscape and that kind of thing, right? Oops. Sorry. You are correct. Okay, thanks. Um, this property is zoned B4, so if a new parking area were to be established, say, along 8th Street, um, those areas would have to meet certain downtown design standards. We have talked to the um, developers about those, and we've been working with them on, on those items as well. But as far as the historic significance, that does not apply here. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to remember the briefing we had on the South Haymarket possible redevelopment ideas. Um, was it on N Street that they, we were considering a dedicated bikeway? 
along the street? The protected bikeway yeah. is along N Street and is under construction. Yeah. Um, it should continue to be under construction this year and I believe be finished later this year. And that would <coughs> extend from the Jamaica North Trail along Arena Drive um, all the way east through downtown to 21st, 22nd area. Thank you. Any other questions for Paul? All right, thanks. Madam Chair, members of the Commission, thank you. My name is Tom Houston. My address is 233 South 13th Street here in Lincoln. Uh, appearing before you today on behalf of Telesis, Telesis with me today is uh, Brian Bowles and uh, Eric Schaefer and uh, Megan Sonnenberg and Mindy Rogers, uh, who have worked very diligently over the last six months on this project. And this is something really cool that we haven't really seen in Lincoln. Uh, Paul is accurate. In, in 2011, uh, the city of Lincoln approved a redevelopment project uh, for the first phase of this development. And this, this, what's in front of you today is really to facilitate the uh, relocation of two primary employers from their uh, prior location at 7th and Q down to the, the, this new development. Uh, both Data Security and Imperian Brewing Company will be relocated down to this former Metal Gold site. And it's a better fit for those uh, operations and uh, more room to expand, et cetera, down here uh, at the property uh, at, at 8th and M. Uh, the request in front of you really relates to uh, the, the, the uh, vacation of both M Street, M Street on the north side of the block, ranging from approximately 16 feet on the west edge to about 30 feet on the east edge. And then uh, on the south edge of the property uh, from L, L Street, the vacation of the north side of L Street from approximately tw 20 feet on the uh, west edge of the property to approximately 35 feet on the east edge of the property. And, and the principal reasons for the vacation, as mentioned by Paul, is uh, for the expansion of the geothermal well system that is really designed to provide the heating and cooling uh, 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 deliveries for this entire complex, which uh, once developed will exceed 175,000 square feet. It's a very big complex. Uh, the primary purpose of the vacation would allow the installation of 76 new geothermal wells, and, and the overhead does show the location of those the, uh, the proposed geothermal wells, not only in M Street, but also in L Street. And I will, I will get to the green areas. The, uh, uh, Mindy tells me this colorization is salmon. I thought it was orange, but salmon. I'll go with salmon. <laughs> uh, the, uh, one of the interesting things that I, I found out uh, because of Brian's math skills, that one of the primary uh, objectives of the uh, Central Business di District uh, reduction targets for reducing uh, really carbon dioxide. The, the objective, if you look at, at this graph, uh, the, the Can industrial... Can you zoom out on that a little bit, Tom? Sure. Thank you. There, is that better? Mm -hmm. The yellow indicates the uh, Central Business District industrial reduction target uh, to reduce uh, the, the uh, uh, greenhouse gas or really carbon dioxide by 754 tons and the combination of the solar reduction and the geothermal reduction because of this project will more than satisfy that for the entire central business district, which is pretty phenomenal in my opinion. But that's the primary reason for uh, the, the, the uh, vacation requests uh, to really match up well with the sustainable energy and uh, renewable energy objectives of the comprehensive plan. Uh, obviously, it's fully endorsed uh, by the comprehensive plan. The, the second primary purpose, is, as Paul did mention, really relates to the ability of, just so I'm consistent, I'll put M Street at the north, the ability of uh, Telesis and their operations to continue to make this, this block a fully functioning and economically viable uh, and vital area and uh, really expand into the area as it, uh, uh, the, the uses dictate. Uh, to provide not only access, uh, as indicated, but also some additional private parking areas uh, on the surface use of these properties. Uh, I, I would mention back on our original diagram, the green area, uh, it, it's really intended for the same purpose, but is a part of the efforts of my client working with staff over the last four or five months, uh, recognizing the city has really di different objectives for the 8th Street corridor because of the primary 
I guess, uh, uh, traffic component that it will uh, become as a part of the South Haymarket plan, uh, we reached a compromise and rather than seeking vacation, we're going to try to be able to utilize a permanent easement for the same purpose. It, and, and the reason we didn't for all the other areas is it's obviously my client's going to be investing approximately $1.2 million in the installation of this geothermal well system to provide the energy. And it's much easier from a financing perspective and uh, to really have long-term ownership so that you know that your investment is secure. Uh, but with, as it relates to M Street, we, we b believe that we can accomplish the same objective with the easement. That's not in front of you, but I just want to let you know that 8th Street is a part of the plan that will be included with the installation of the new 75 wells. Um, I, I guess the, a couple other things that I would mention is that obviously we, we believe that uh, the request in front of you for the street vacations is consistent with the comprehensive plan, with the downtown master plan, and also with the uh, proposed South Haymaker South Haymarket plan. Uh, we believe that this uh, permanency and the ownership and also with the easement really adds to the certainty that will be required for uh, the, the property owner to make the continued investment in this, uh, this property. It, it also will allow the, the property to become economically viable and it, it is a historic uh, significant property and we can continue to preserve this historically significant property. I, I'm kind of excited there because it does provide a template on how we can try to address some of the energy issues and the energy component of the comprehensive plan because that's really tough to do. I mean, state law was changed to really require all municipalities to include the energy component in their comprehensive plan with a lot, a lot of guidance on how to do so and I think this provides some kind of template for us to move forward and be able to do so. Now obviously we believe it's compatible with the city objectives. Um, so with that I'd be happy to answer any questions. Before I, I do conclude I do want to uh, specifically thank uh, all the city staff that we worked, for, worked with, not only the mayor's office, the planning department, the public works department, and the urban development department. We all worked uh, over the last four or five months on the plan and came up with something that works for everybody and uh, it's exciting to see it move forward. So with that I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Tom? Kathy. Um, Tom, I think this is a really interesting project and it combines two of my favorite things, which is being able to preserve the historic buildings and also find a sustainable energy source. So that's mm -hmm. really cool. Um, I'm just curious, is the energy sustainability that we're going to get from this geothermal system, might it be able to provide energy to other buildings as well? Or do we, I mean, I'm just curious, I, I, I don't know if you know I believe it's going to be sized primarily for the 175,000 square feet of the complex. Um, uh, in, ultimately, I, I didn't do the total. If we have 76, add 76 wells to the existing 58, you know, there's going to be you know, 130, 125 wells that are going to be servicing the 175,000 square foot of the complex. So there's a lot of phases yet to be coming in this development. Uh, but uh, it's amazing to me that um, a former milk plant is going to be now a, be a craft brewery, and I think it's going to be a great addition to the area. Thanks. Tom, the, um, I think you can, I think it's possible to, to pave over geothermal well fields and, and do turf and maybe some other kinds of insignificant kind of plantings, not probably trees, things like that. Any, any um, uh, desire in the future to do anything more than just basic pavement or turf or you know, those I, I, kinds of things that are appropriate? I, I don't think so. I think you're right. You, you do want to avoid conflicts with any deep root. Right, or foundations, things like that. Okay. But, but uh, uh, Brian Bowles did inform me of the uh, various systems they have installed at all their facilities around town. They've never had to re-access them. It's not something that yeah. you need access for monthly maintenance or annual maintenance. I mean, you can, and so... It, it's easy to, uh, uh, once they're constructed, uh, uh, that you don't need continuous access, so you can go ahead and pave over it, and that's an appropriate treatment. Just a curious question. How, how deep are the wells? Have those been calculated yet? Um, I'm going to underestimate. I, I know Brian did tell me. It's hundreds of feet. Yeah. Hundreds of feet. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Tom, the buildings that are there, you're not, uh, you're not going to change any of those at this point. It's... Stay, stay as uh, it is. Well, as we move forward, I mean, I, I guess there are 15 condominium units, and the, the redevelopment project uh, that has been approved 
only deals with a few of them out of the gate. There's multiple condo units that are subject to future redevelopment. Frankly, that's one of the reasons we used a condominium regime, so we could do a phased redevelopment effort. Uh, so there's additional development to occur, or redevelopment to occur as additional uses are, are determined. But right now, uh, it's primarily the data security in uh, units E and F, and then uh, Imperial Nails will be located uh, uh, in primarily building K for the present time. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Do we have uh, testimony in support of this application? All right. Testimony in opposition. Any staff questions? All right. Um, then we'll go forward with entertaining a motion. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Well, I'll just kind of say again what I said. I think this is really exciting because we're taking a historic building and making it new in a really creative way that's good for the environment. And so I intend to support this. And I, I would echo those sentiments. It's really seems like a really neat project and cool and everything that planning commissioners love. So I'm going to support the application. Let's call the vote. Weber? Yes. Harris abstains. Shear? Yes. Legion? Yes. Thunderman? Yes. Hogue? Yes. Lust. Yes. Motion carried, 7-0. Abstaining. At this time, um, anyone wishing to speak on an item not on the agenda may do so. No one, we are adjourned. <laughs>